Good morning. Can you all hear me? That looks like a yes. Of course, that's my morning, but it's okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're just having a beginner's class here, and um, I need your guys' help as to what we're going to look at. Uh, when I advertised this, I phrased it um, things that we just don't get. You know, things like, well, I don't understand this. I haven't gotten a lot of feedback. Uh, someone said um, they want to understand how to use Moyos. A couple little things like that. Someone asked a question about Giuseppe. But I'm hoping that you guys have questions we can, we can address. So, do you? Beginner's class, let's see, a four dollar cute. <clears throat> Anybody have questions? Now, if you don't, I'll just start going over basic stuff. But I'm hoping that you guys have questions. In handicap? Four handicap with white approach. No, not the horse and not the girl. Um, so we've got two questions in front of me. Uh, how do we choose pinchers, high or low specifically, and in a four stone handicap, better to defend or play away? Okay, <coughs> so uh, we've got three questions. Let's. Uh, Start with the idea of four stone handicap. Let's put that on the board. And white approaches. Is it better to stay local or better to play away? Uh, the word better doesn't really apply. There, it's a matter of style. But the basic idea is anytime, even in even up game, handicap game, whatever, when your 4-4 four -four is approached, uh, it's better to respond unless you have something urgent to do. Let's talk about why. Um, first, we need to realize that the 4-4 four -four is a relatively modern idea. I don't know. It's, uh, um, seven foot to the right is how we do our uh, drift. Guys, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, the wife needed something, and of course she comes first. <clears throat> so, 4-4 um, four -four is a modern idea, and if we compare these two ideas, the 3-4 is already, it already has something of a base, and it takes a certain amount of time for the 3-4 to settle. The 4-4 four -four without a base takes longer to settle. That equates to white getting a little bit of extra profit. So unless it's not a big profit, you can play away because you're in the mood to play away. But unless you have something that you particularly want to do, we usually respond when our 4-4 four is approached. We can say that a professional will respond when his 4-4 four is approached 95% of the time. That's relatively accurate. So whether it's even or handicapped, we'd like to, to stay. When our 
uh, other corners are approached, we don't care. But when our four corners are approached, we tend to respond. Uh, back to the uh, four stone idea. These are the basic moves locally. And none of them lose points. They're all fine. But notice the attitude. Here we are with in a four stone game, meaning we have a great start. And this move is attempting to survive, basically. It's a, a frightened move. Now, it can be played differently than that, but that's usually the attitude behind this move is, oh, I hope I survive. The best attitude is, how dare you play on my board? I'm going to make this difficult for you. So this is the most, this is the preferred pinch. So does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to read back the questions. Uh, high or low pinch? I'll put it back. So let's start with the upper right. I'll answer Hawkeye's question in a moment. Um, we're pinching the upper right versus the low left. Let's put them both down, actually. In the upper right, right there. Uh, we need to understand the huge difference between, well, let's look at the right side of the board, between this position and we make Q4 a black stone, this position. Huge, huge difference. If it's a white stone, then we choose a pinch that is, we want to be safe in the right side of the board because it's white's area. We play a move that's distant and hard to attack. We're not here to hurt white. This is white's area. We're here to be safe. On the right, I'm sorry, on the left, it's black's area. So we're here to make profit. So you can do an aggressive fighting move because black's the one who is prepared for the fight. Or something more, a little more general. Um, with more of an, instead of fighting, it's more of an attempt to build the left. But there's no particular reason to play a safe move on the left. That doesn't make any sense. We want to be aggressive on the left, but defensive on the right. Does this make sense? Okay. So, upper right. The aggressive pinches would be these three. And the defensive pinches would be the triangles. Actually, R12 is a very unusual pinch for complex reasons. Just tends to not work well with things. It's just tacky, but it's just not used very often. Okay, so that's high pinches versus low pinches. Um, no, actually, that's distance. High versus low. Um, we probably want to say that, in general, third line, whether we're talking about a pinch or anything else, is for stability. Third line is uh, you, you're getting points and stability. Fourth line, you're getting influence and ease of running, safety. That tends to be how we look at the third and fourth lines. Uh, so let's put a very regular 
situation in here. Um, assuming white's going to pinch, would white choose high or low? I would say, generally speaking, any of the six are perfectly acceptable. They've done amazing amount of work on what they all mean, and, and this includes if D4 is black or white. If they just present a different game. The principle is, on the left, since it's a black area, play a safe move, which would be D or E. Those are the safe ones. But they're all fine. Uh, just different. Okay. Um, Hawkeye asked a question about F17. Isn't it okay to be patient? Was basically how I understood his question. Let's be patient now and. Um, not get into any trouble, especially early on. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, F-17 can certainly be used very aggressively, but that's, it's not common for people to think of F-17 as an aggressive move. You know, clearly this looks more aggressive to pinch tightly immediately. That's just right here, right now, I'm in your face. That's very aggressive. While this, generally speaking, is passive, but you can also see it as uh, as patient, which is fine. Uh, this is also patient, but putting more emphasis on growing and more emphasis on the attack. Um, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, they're all, I mean, playing away is fine. They're all fine. Okay, that's two of the questions we I saw. Uh, one more is here. When to how do we decide when to invade versus us? Uh, when to invade or reduce versus expanding our own area? There's actually a couple questions in there. First, when do we? How do we decide if it's time to? reduce versus invading, and when is the time to do either of those versus growing our own area? Okay, let's do, uh, here's a very basic idea. The biggest area of the board is on the right. Is that something we all know? We understand why the right side is biggest? And it has to do with walls. Um, well, let's just spend a moment looking at it. We'll start with the basic principle here. I'm adding these extra stones. And we're looking at this shape, this is the suggested sketch of these four black stones. And a lot of people think of it as a cup that can hold water, or the gold board that can hold points, kind of a cup shape. And if we compare that to this shape, a much narrower cup. It doesn't hold nearly the same amount of water. See the difference? So that means that walls, and a shamari is a two-tone wall, walls face in the direction of their height. Mm, does that make sense? I may have not stated that particularly well. Let's 
show one other little example. So let's build a wall this size. And we're comparing an extension to A versus an extension to B. Well, B is massively large. A is downright tiny. Okay, so just looking at on this board, right side is biggest. So is it time to grow our own? Or is it time to reduce his? The question's always the same. Which one's bigger? And the right side's bigger. So that may sound simple, and it is. Um, it's a little bit of a question, how do we decide the right side figure? But it's all about uh, the Shamari has a two-stone desire to extend, while the 404 has a one-stone desire to extend. So greater desire equals greater size. Um, some of you may know Jay Lee. He played a game years ago against uh, Danny Jane, and he plays this way. It's, uh, we call it a change. We all know it's not biggest, but no one can prove it to be a game-losing move, so it's still on the list of huge moves. So. Okay, so that's um, how do we decide to grow our own versus invade. That's only a matter of size. He won by uh, one and a half points. I could probably play the game out for you. <laughs> uh, white R6. Uh, that's a good question. So let's start with, this is the time-honored move. We're playing as close as we can to the big area. Uh, let's explain this. So let's look at Black's pinch. Black pinches, and on the surface, it looks like Black is using his wall wonderfully in Sente. If we just go back 30 years, this was a bad move for White. Black's getting exactly what he wanted in Sente. So instead, white plays here saying, if you want this, you're getting less. And that's fine with me. I can't stop from getting everything, but I can stop it from getting the huge move. Uh, by the way, we don't like this move, even though we have our extension, because no matter what happens, I mean, we're just going to be really tight and uncomfortable. There's no reason to step into discomfort like this. So now, if black plays here, we have a little bit of room, extra space before we hit the black stone. So this is a safe stone, but tends to get a little bit tight. So we give ourselves a little more room. Let's say it's in the last uh, just a few years, five or so years, that this white move is be becoming acceptable. <clears throat> white says, I dare you to try to make your extension more profitable than just a regular move. Uh, whites find ways to say, no, you really can't take all that in one move. So it's kind of an advanced idea, and, it, and people are trying it out, and it's pretty well established that it's fine. But I'm, I don't play it. I, I don't understand it. This is the basic move. I play the basic move. OK, so that talks about uh, whether it's better to invade or grow, uh, just a matter of which is bigger. Uh, if they're at all equitable, similar at all, then you can get just style. Is there any preference on which side black should approach this one? Uh, yeah. Let's remember that the A side is bigger than the B side, right? The A side 
has a two-stone desire to extend, the B side has a once desire to extend. So A is bigger. Mm, someone like, I'm sure you all know Mr. Yang, uh, um, his whole style is based on fundamentals. And so he'll play, if he's going to play one of these moves, he'll play A because that's the bigger side. While someone else like uh, Feng Yun, she plays much more creatively. She says, oh, I don't care which one's bigger. It means nothing to me. I'm going to play something of interest. And she'll play interesting things rather than big things. Because her style is very creative, uh, mix it up, make a fight. Um, and she claims, I'll just outread you. I'll, I'll, I'll just play better in general. I don't care if you get an extra two points here. I'll make it up in the fight. Well, so style's a big thing. So A is bigger than B. And if we just go back 20 years, this was uh, totally standard <coughs> to play this uh, move, and we generally play it real basic here. Perhaps like this, or this way. But nowadays, they're saying, well, if I get Sente in this formation, and Sente is big, so I'm just going to play this right away. So nowadays, they're saying this one's bigger. But this, I mean, this is still a 9 dollars professional move, but it's just not played so much anymore because it's slightly, slightly smaller for thinking. Okay. Uh, well, from here, let's open up again to um, follow-up questions. Anything we haven't covered yet that crosses your mind or anything new to cover? Again, as this is in a beginner's class, I'm not sure what questions beginners have. That's why I'm hoping that you'll ask some. And you have, and I appreciate that. But we're going to we'll start in here. Any other questions? Uh, Questions on our mind? Hi, Sarah. Didn't see you here. <coughs> yes, Sharon. Um, Okay, just a second. Uh, Sharon asked about this. It's like it's R10. Wow. If black has uh, tell you what, Sharon, I'm going to give you control. Could you form the board position you're talking about? I see. And we'll start with an assembly from even up game. give white these two. So now there's an even number of stones on the board. Black to play. Let's um, and we need it to be white's move. And let's put it here. And it's White smooth. Let's put it here. Okay. I'm just trying to form a reasonable board position so we can look at. I'll remark them. 
these are the four ways to approach these black stones on the bottom. Um, D, why D? Biggest area. The right side is the biggest open area. So we play D. Uh, if there was a weakness, like for instance, um, let's say uh, white played here and black played here, well now I'm concerned about my stone while I defend. You notice how I'm getting close to H3, I'm trying to form a board position where uh, defense would mean H3. So if I need a defensive move on the bottom left, H3 becomes interesting. Uh, if it's only a matter of size, then on the board like this, these the bigger areas will play a D. B and C is a matter of, um, let's make B a better move. And we want If we're going to choose between a between one and two, well, one is closer to the big area, so we would choose one. If we chose this, notice how black his pinch is creating a big area, taking a big area and making it bigger. The point is that if indeed one approaches the bigger area than two does, then we play at one because of it. So most of these can, it's just a matter of, you know, um, pretty much common sense. Like on this one, the right side is bigger, so we'll play at D, assuming those are the four moves we're looking at. Um, let's not forget that there's, everything breaks down, well, almost everything breaks down into the three basic questions, which are, do I need to defend, are, are my groups, healthy enough? Uh, am I okay is the question. Second question, is he okay? So if we're if our groups are okay, then we're going to look at his groups and see if it's time to attack. And then lastly, is what's big? You know, what, what are the big areas? Uh, and on this board, black owes a move in the upper right. So white should be pinching. So that would be the biggest thing on this board is uh, black has a weak stone, so we'll attack. Okay, I think I just got through, oh, that was Sharon's question. Let me go back and see if I can read. Uh, Uncola, you had a question. Can you form that if I give you control? And if you can state the question. Um, he's not a good move, so I'm assuming we saw it from a not great player. Uh, sure, A.O. Kami, I'll, I'll get to you in a moment. Um, yeah, Uncola, I'm assuming we're talking about white here. <coughs> um, neither of these are good moves. So, uh, let's find some starting position, some assumption to take. So, let's say we want, it's time to invade, not reduce, it's time to invade the black area. Okay. Let's make that assumption from this position. Okay. How do we invade the black area? 
Well, how about this way? This, this should be an easy invasion because black's so weak. It would be silly to reduce and give black health and points when he's weak. So he'd invade. Of course the blacks know in a position to be attacking white. Okay, so let's make a different assumption. Um, there are no white stones nearby. Okay. If white if white's three stones were like this, then all of a sudden the outside of the board uh, the middle is very valuable. I think I like the idea of making black, giving black some points and making an outside wall. I don't care about black's few points and health. He wasn't weak anyway. But now my outside is working super well with my other stones. So one assumption was black had a weakness, so we invade. This assumption was white has the outside, we take the outside. Um, let's say none of those apply. Well, then maybe we want to simply live inside. Uh, we usually play this move. This is a probe asking black, would, do you want the corner or the side? If black says, I want the corner, then we say, great. You can take the whole thing. Black takes the whole corner. Yeah, these three stones should live pretty easy then. We've got two moves for free, giving black the corner, which was his anyway. And then our final move gave us at least as much health as black stone has. Black could also say, I want the outside. And let's say black plays the Atari. Mm, let's go. There's just so many ways here. Um, let's do this one. He wants the outside. Then we're alive in the corner. That's just that's called the tripod group. It's just alive. It, it, so the probe makes black commit. And then we go the other way. Here's another probe. Pretty hard for black to do a lot here. Maybe this. And maybe we'll play another probe. That gives us this free move. So it's all about finding free moves. The probe produces the next move. I guess it's a little bit advanced, but contact plays, it's all about the contact plays um, really encourage settling. So, um, hopefully that answered it. And there's so many different probes and things they do, and, but it asks questions. Okay, so Ao Kami had, had a question, so I will give him control. Okay. <coughs> After he sets up his uh, position <coughs> and we uh, try to answer his question, <coughs> uh, I think we'll look at uh, defining the opening, middle game, and end game, because those are uh, actually pretty important. It really helps us decide where to play and how to come to play. Okay.
What about the invasion? I might understand the question. Oh, that's yeah, part two, I think. R10 is thickness. Okay. Um, let's start with R5. <coughs> White is thick. Again, these are partial situations. White thickness on the tin line uh, on this board, those are weak stones, so the thickness doesn't apply. Uh, on our hypothetical board that we're trying to, to form in our minds, we're assuming that's a strong group. Uh, but notice there's no height. There's no stones up here, right? There's, we're, we're, so we're assuming there's no stones near black other than the three thick ones. Then they're too far away. Uh, white should white should uh, die here, right? This should just die. Yeah. Gosh, the actual life and death is a little tough. Um, well, let me change it. What we generally have is a stone here, even one stone. Now it's now the underneath issues are much, much easier. And White's comfortable playing R5. It's not much of a question about it. But if you're a little further away, even if you're thick, it's a little questionable. Uh, it really depends on the board position. So I'm not exactly sure how to answer it. The question seems to be, he keeps taking my points away. Probably weren't your points then. Let's look at the uh, top as an example. Um, so, Connecting stone versus square to it. Um, again, the only answer, the only possible answer is which one's bigger. And I mean, that, that sounds so simplistic, but that's the, I mean, any board position you were to bring me and ask me, oh, is it bigger, bigger to connect my stones to give me center influence or whatever, or taking the point, just to kind of work with it. Sometimes when you secure, when, when you connect your stones, you're getting strength to the outside, and you might have a weak group out there that really needs help. So you give away some points to help you regroup. Uh, maybe there's no weak group and you want points, great. Um, maybe he has a weak group, so you take the outside to attack. It depends on the board position. There's no, there is no other answer, so that's a little tough to come up with. You're forming your other question here. So the bottom of this board was like the top of the one you gave. This is um, uh, this is Cho Hun Yun and Ni Wei Ping, <coughs> and he comes in. So. We have to realize the bottom of the board, it's a moyo. There's no points there at all. White literally has zero points on the bottom. But it's bound to become points. Well, we don't know where they're going to come. We don't know 
White might say, I don't want any points, I want thickness. We don't know what's going to happen. So when he comes in, White takes the outside uh, because of uh, this idea. It's, uh, he's building a massive outside White arena. We'll just take a look at it here. So, notice White took the outside. Well, he also took in points. Yeah, but on this board, because of the left and center, White said, no, this looks way better than a couple of points on the bottom. This is dramatic. And uh, we just start this, this board. It doesn't seem like White has any points at all. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, classic game versus influence. Um, let's look at it from this perspective. Black has no points. No, doesn't mean white has to kill anything. No. And this will this will explain it hopefully. Here we have classic. Black has the moyo. White has the points. Black has zero. But when white comes in, black black will get points naturally. He starts by attacking, and he still doesn't have any actual points yet. But they're extremely close to being points. I mean, every move of black has been sent in. He still doesn't actually have any points yet, but he's clearly not behind in the game. And we can't say that the left is actual cash yet, although it's he's going to be getting an awful lot of points there. He just hasn't been exactly formed yet. Um, so when you have a moyo. Uh, a lot of influence, points tend to come naturally. One other thing about Moyos, notice that White is settling his group, everything's fine, but that's about the end of the story for White. Now let's play the same sequence with a better entry point. Uh, let me mark the entry points and what we're talking about here. This does show us that we tend to approach fourth line stones from the knight's move because it gives such a nice underneath. Okay, so let's uh, let's play the same thing on this side. Exact same Giuseppe. but this time far, far, far better for White. Black has an actual recruit on the left, so all of a sudden it's White that White's doing dramatically more. Black has to come back and try to survive. So <clears throat> a lot of entry points here, but B is better because the uh, D10 is weaker than even Q10. So that shows us that B has more things going on for it than C does. Okay. Um, let's look at some basic stuff here. Let's go with this type of game. This is a very, very common type of wood. It's super common. Uh, so we're in the opening. How do we know we're still in the opening? Because of the completely unplayed areas. For instance, we have the left side. The left side has not doesn't even have a stone in it yet. Uh, the B, the top, 
we might say has a stone in it, but it basically looks empty in the bottom too. So we have completely empty areas. So we're still in the opening. Um, there's two huge moves on the board. Have, well, I can take either one, it's just a matter of style, because they're equal. If one was bigger, that would be the fundamentally bigger move, but these are basically equal. If I take this one, why I'll take one. White's looking forward to this kind of growth. Lots of growth can happen here. So if black takes that, this white group is not weak. No, no way in the world it can get in trouble. It can lose its points, but it can't get in trouble. So white continues the idea. And we pretty much get into a... So many variations here. Let's just look at this one. White continues to get points. White continues to get influence. And the game will continue, you know, along these lines. I guess the top figures will go there. Uh, since the thin is getting downright interesting, black, we're finding black playing, starting to play on the fourth line, trying to get access. Uh, there's a fear that if we in the third line, um, White might give away extra points. Please take the entire, a bigger corner than you're due. Ah, but I'm getting more of a center. And yeah, I gave away an extra five points in the corner, but I'm getting way more than that in the center. So Black's afraid of White getting out of control, so he's looking for fourth line moves to make sure White can't, you know, deal with that. Can't do that much. Uh, okay, so let's uh, continue this idea this way. So that's the end of the opening. There are no more open areas. The bottom is uh, how wide? One, two, three, six lines wide, but there's finished groups on each side, so there's it's not what we call an open area. But isn't the corner normally the first place you try to... Uh, yeah. Yes, there it, it is. But again, on... If we're talking about this board, I believe you were talking about this board position. <coughs> uh, yeah, corner's the regular. But something very unusual is happening here. White has dramatic center influence. And we looked at a situation where black got extra points. He's getting a huge side area. Yeah, but White's getting absolutely dramatic center. And when things get dramatic, we have to make changes and say corner's no longer biggest. Center's not, uh, inordinately large, so we have, to, we have to change that idea. Okay. Um, we did... this. Okay, so that's the end of the opening. So black has to decide where to go next. <clears throat> Usually this change between the opening and middle game, or middle game and end game, um, players tend to get confused. I don't know what to do at that point. And this was one of the questions that was someone sent me is, is when you get to this point, how do you decide what to do? And let's not forget that the three questions, which we probably all know, um, will help us in any situation, will guide us. And uh, just to remind you of the three questions, am I okay? And on this board, we'll look around and we'll say, do I have any weak groups? And we know that A stone is a little far from home, a little close to the enemy. So this is on our mind. And we have to ask, well, does it straight up need defense? Well, it's not like it's going to die. So I'd say no. But it is worrying us. So it's on our mind, but it's not critical. So maybe later on as we go down the list, we might decide uh, that's the biggest area. Well, what we'd really like to... Let's say we decide on this board that around A is the biggest area. 
is one of the two biggest areas, and there's another big area. So there's two choices, but this one also defends A. Well, well then we'll choose this one, because they're about the same in points, but this one also defends. So this would be um, win the tie if there's two similar ones. Okay, so is black okay? Well, A is okay, but it's on our mind. Is white okay? Absolutely. Uh, what are the big areas? We usually count them. Area one is the big area. Two, three, four. Area five is undecided. And then the entire center, uh, white looks like that could really get scary, really out of hand. So that's also a big area. So it looks like there's about six big areas. I like to get rid of the small ones first. Area one's tiny. Um, we have a lot of subtle groups there that have no desire at all, no needs at all. Uh, area three is smaller and difficult for black. No reason to say there. Smaller and difficult. Uh, six is huge. Two's huge. Got a stone. I might try this. Because center was huge, we knew that. This defends a stone that I like defending, walking into a big area that I wanted to deal with, making the top area big, which is one of the big areas. This looks like a three plus purpose move. We also might take Sarah's idea and go corner first and see what white does. Is white really going to give away all these points? Those are some pretty big points. We're getting fourth line territory. That's a little dangerous. Be vital, take the corner. You can still come up with this. This would be great too. Be vital, challenge that. This might be a uh, reasonable result for both. And then we're back to the questions. Is black okay? Yeah. Yeah. Big. Center and left seem to be the biggest now. If black wanted to do something about area two, uh, what would be a good place to start with? Uh, Z, what was area two? I'm going to backtrack and see if I can find it. Ah, is this area two? Um, <coughs> the um, move variation tree on the bottom of our KGS window is getting really messy. I'm afraid of going back to the beginning because I'm going to lose my spot, but we're going to do that. See, this is move 28. Because <coughs> um, this is a good question. It comes up a lot, and it's worth, uh, wor worth looking at. So let's start with... This invasion, we've, saw, we've seen it a few times today. Notice at this point, black is going to defend, or else his two stones are going to get uh, hassled. So black defends, giving white the opportunity to extend along the side. He can extend third or fourth line, but chances are black's going to stop us and we're not subtle, so we're going to be moving out to the center. So we already know we're moving into the center, so we tend to play this one instead, making our center run a little easier. Okay, so this is pretty common. Okay, so now we're going to change and put this stone in already, and we'll try it again. Now black doesn't have to defend. Ah, black can move ahead. Ooh, now this group has gone from acceptable, black can chase it a bit, but that's understandable, to no eyes, um, difficult running, will still survive, but a lot of pain. This is much too difficult. So, when black already has an extension, let's just get rid of K16 because it's not important to be there. When black has any of the three, any of the four, really, then instead of one, we play 
Mm, let's go with one of these two. These are the two most common. <coughs> one and two are, um, let's look at two as with our basic. Second line, a much smaller move than third line. Not just a little bit smaller, clearly smaller in scope, yet much more secure. So we've traded size for security. If black tries to surround us, we live so easy. Nice, comfortable life. Now he gets the outside, but we just wanted health in the area. Instead, if black takes the corner, then we can lightly run out. Again, these are commonplace variations. So, someone, it may have been Z, asked a minute ago what to do, and this is the answer, is this low second line move, kind of a sideways knight's move. This is a regular knight's move, third line, but this is the one we're looking at. This also settles easily, but it gives black an easier outside. It gives them a little more options. So we only play one when we don't care which option he has. Usually the outside's bigger, so we play two. That's the commonplace. Uh, one can be nice. If black takes the corner, we have a very comfortable, easy group developing. Okay. <coughs> uh, oh, yeah, 28 was our move. Eight. Okay, oh, well we were there. Let's do that. Oh, right, right, right. So we did this. Here, here, here. See, I knew I'd have trouble if I went back to this. It's this. Let's keep it like that. And then white move. <coughs> uh, we're still in, so we we done with the opening. That was Black's start for middle game. He decided to get into the center while helping a stone. That made sense. Let's look at uh, another option Black might choose. He might say, um, you know, I'm not that considered about my, uh, worried about my A stone or the center. I'm really concerned about the left side. Well, then we play the move we looked at over here. Very reasonable. Mr. Wong, of the former position, how would White attack A here later if it was submitted in the former position? Um, oh, does this answer your question? I mean, we're, we're on the right track to answer? Okay. And are you asking, how does White attack? Oh, how would white attack the A stone? I see. Um, let's, and we're just coming up on our hour here. So let's make this our last question. <coughs> As with most things in Go, we start with corner, then side, then center. So if we wanted to attack the A stone, we remove one of its running directions. It's so probably corner first. So we're removing its main running direction, or one of its ways towards safety, while taking a nice sized corner, so we would attack that way. Our second choice would be this way, its side direction, 
So notice we're kind of putting in a our own stones kind of weak. And our third choice would be taking away the through running direction. So let's restate that. We can say 95% of the time attacking means to remove a running direction. <coughs> and normally corner first, side second, corner left. That probably finishes those questions for me. Well, hold on, son. Shot. Maybe for next time, if you have some position that allows either monkey jump or one space jump, one, you have the um, <laughs> So when I read that, I find that a very complex question. So notice something we did today. People asked a question, I gave them control, and they formed the question on the board. So the song, he's one key, he's actually a very strong one too, as I recall. Um, we can't call him a beginner, but he might come with a question and, and lay it out on the board for me, and then we can talk about it. Uh, and I encourage, uh, our next one will be a week from, to, uh, two weeks from today. I'll be out of town next Saturday. And it might be a more basic question. Simply, I, I'm, for me, picking apart that question is very difficult. My mind doesn't work that way. It could be a very simple question, but for me it's difficult. Um, so try to come next time with uh, questions like that. Well, what happens in a position like this? How do we answer this question? Um, and that'll be uh, good. And Hawkeye has questions about um, transition from middle game to end game, stuff like that. Okay, so uh, like I said, next class, we'll have at least one more of these, and it'll be in two weeks. Um, try to have questions prepared, and we'll take it from there. Okay, guys, we'll see you all later. Bye.